Hi. Um, so yeah, I was just making a little video to show how um, I can um, make these um, armies of um, war games figures from um, computer games um, models that have been um, ripped out of um, 3D commercially available games. Um, the assets can be collected from various games like um, Fog 2, Age of Empires and uh, other such games where they may have uh, useful 3D models for um, for war games and, and other um, online games, uh, digital games. So, um, so these are some Parthian cataphracts that I just fairly quickly um, got from Field of Glory um, yesterday. Um, So they've been um, they've been brought out of um, the game software with a kind of screen grabbing type of um, software called um, Ninja Ripper, which is um, the icon is down there. And um, then, the, but they don't come in looking like this. You have to sort of pose them in a 3D package. So you do need the the Ninja Ripper to to get them in the first place. Then um, once you have Ninja Ripper, you have to um, convert them to a usable file format. So you need a format converter. So there's another piece of software called um, Noasis, which you can get, or Noesis, which will convert the files. And then um, from there, you can open the files in um, a 3D modeling and animation package. Now I'm using uh, Maya here, um, but there is um, Blender is a free um, 3D package, which will do everything you need. It's, it's very simple, relatively, um, what you need to do to them to pose them. Um, just literally uh, pull their, the points of the wireframes around. So each of these models comes in as a as a polygon mesh like this. And this is what we call a, a low polygon uh, mesh. It doesn't have very many of these, the more um, detailed models, the sort of things you might, they might uh, see from um, the software Z, ZBrush, ZBrush, would have many, many millions of um, these faces. But um, for computer games and for um, tabletop simulator type games, you need a fairly low poly model so that you can have lots of them. Because obviously, if you have hundreds of these on the on the table, it does start to add up to to, to thousands of polygons. So um, if you get too high a total amount it just slow down your graphics card and computers won't run as quickly so um so this is a really quite a low amount you can see up here the actual numbers um the faces it has 1300 faces which for computer graphics terms is pretty low um, um so the, the detail is actually in the textures and the materials so um even though you know, uh, this looks a bit like a sort of origami thing, if you um, if you gave it a flat material with no with no um, um, colors or textures on it, you can see it, it looks rather um, unsmooth and um, angular and without much detail. But with the textures on, you can you can give those low poly models a lot more detail enough to make them look quite convincing especially when you're normally seeing them at a further distance like that, okay. Um, but um, I'm going to go through the process of actually getting them to this before I'm showing anything about manipulating them, posing them, um, and fixing them up, the textures and things, just yet. Um, so um, to, to get these models, you're going to need um, um, a, there's a couple of bits of software that you need. So um, the um, the main one is uh, Ninja Ripper. So if you did a search for Ninja Ripper, you pretty soon find it. Um, it's this one here by Game Banana. So this software can be downloaded here, I'm pretty sure somewhere. There's a few instructions for it. 
Um, here's a download link. Okay, so you need Ninja Ripper. Um, everything you'll need is um, Noesis, N-O-E-S-I-S. by someone called Rich Whitehouse. So that's the first hit that comes up. It's a software that will um that will convert between multiple formats. Um, it doesn't come with the Ninja Ripper format immediately. You have to actually add it in. So um, there is a you do have to go into to computer files and uh, move a few um, plugins and settings around in the softwares. But if you download both of those first, um, get them um, downloaded and um, installed on your computer. The um, um, the, the, the Um, can I show the software is once installed on your computer? So you go to your main computer drive where you'd see the program files. So these are all Windows computer um, Windows programs, okay? Um, so in the program files folder. You should, once you've got those installs, you should see them there. So there's um, Ninja and the 86 files with a few things in it, okay, including the Ninja Ripper application, which you can move to your uh, desktop or, um, or taskbar um, ready, for, ready for use, okay. I'm going to just open another So just go to the programs again. Um, if you can go to the Noasis folder. It has a plugin section. And um, if you go into the Python box, there is a, um, it's had the Ninja Ripper Python script added here. So um, normally, when you get um, the Ninja Ripper, it has the um, it has the um, the Python script in the folder here. So you'd have to drag it from the Ninja um, folder to the um, to the Noesis um, plugins Python. Okay, that would just allow Noesis to convert the the um, the the files for you and then turn them into more use, more commonly known um, 3D formats such as um, OBJ and FBX, the main two that we'll be using. Um, so it doesn't come as standard with it. So you have to get that, um, that .py file. And I, I think it's not here in my Ninja uh, folder because I'd actually moved it rather than copying it. Um, but yeah, if that one's in there, then that's ready to go. Um, the Ninja Ripper itself, so you can, um, once you've, you've got these two on your taskbar, so I've got them down here, I've got Ninja Ripper at the bottom there, and um, the Noesis one there, um, ready to use. So um, to actually make a rip, 
of the of a game that you are wanting to get some models from, you need to go and um, open that game up. Okay, so I'm just going to shut down my software there and go to um, uh, the Field of Glory. So I collected, um, I opened up the Parthians yesterday and um, collected uh, one of each of the models in the Parthian selection from Field of Glory. But um, but when I looked at my um, army lists for Parthians, I've seen there's several other types that I need. So um, if we include hill tribesmen, javelin men, and um, medium spear, mediocre. Um, so I may now try and just get some of those sort of from similar period um, armies. So I'll see if I can find one. So I've got my field of glory open over the other side there. I'll just bring that across so you can see. Um, Let's just go to battles, a uh, quick battle. Um, rise, of, rise of Persia, maybe. Or is it in legions? Let's try it. Oh, let's try legions. takes ages to load. Um, so I'm guessing a bit, but um, hopefully maybe um, the Persians. Let's try the Persians. And um, all right, the Armenians is the enemy. So I just um, press create a small game. And wait for it again. So slingers, javelin men, um, pike men, spearmen, anything like that I'm looking for. Oh, so what do I get? Loads of horsemen. Uh, Surely there's some infantry here somewhere. Oh, here we go. Irregular foot and um, some levy spearmen. Well, they look... Um, I'm just going to go for one of these. So... Um, when you get your game, what you should do is um, only like move to a, a place on screen where um, you have an open space. Obviously, I've only got a deployment area to choose from here uh, at the beginning of this game. So I'm just going to, I'm going to put them out here on a plane in the middle of this plane. Um, as these are the only ones I want to capture at the moment, I'm just going to put them on their own over here. Um, so that the, the Ninja Ripper will capture everything that actually appears on screen in the window that you're zoomed in on. So if I wanted to capture the entire army, I could obviously just put the whole lot all together in the middle and it would capture everything, all of the all in one go. It would make one great big file full of you know, over a hundred elements. They won't be labelled or anything, so it can be quite confusing to sort them all out. You have to literally do them all and then open them up and find out what they are. Um, but as I'm just looking for just like this one thing at the moment, I'm just going to capture these two. So I'll zoom in on those. Um, it captures terrain as well, so you don't want too much terrain nearby if you can find an open area um, when you do it. That's better, then you're going to only capture a few things. So 
they're ready. So then you can open the Ninja Ripper itself. So that opens up as a little window. Okay. Um, it's saying um, um, what you're capturing, or where you're capturing from, so it can see it can see that straight away, and um, and it asks for um, it wants um, it wants a location for you to send your rips to. So um, I'm still using one that I did before, but you, yeah, you can you can put in there and you can just uh, go to a location on your computer, uh, make a folder, just called, you know called, called um, whatever army it is or something, and just call it rips, and um, and press on that so it gives it a lo oh dear I've just lost my location now. Um, I want to just put that back before I so I make a, a bit of a mess somewhere there. Okay, so I've got a folder called AGG, and um, I've got a RIPS folder. I'm just going to send it there. Um, okay, and you press the Run button. It's saying... Oh, no, sorry. Before that, um, you need to um, set the type of um, a mode for it called the inject mode um, it, it says in the general instructions for ninja ripper to sort of trough, use the first one if it doesn't work work your way down the list um, or you can just find out um, quite easily what type of um, it's basically to do with DirectX, the the, the, the game software um, the, which um, has something to do with your the graphics card and the and the, the way the game's played um, if it's um, I'm pretty sure I, f I found out that the, the Field of Glory is um, DirectX um, um, 9, not the latest one, 11. So um, that's the, this one, the D9. But I think it can actually work it out anyway. So you don't have to find out. Although it's quite easy to find out what, 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 what they use because um, you just go to the game details. Um, and you press run, uh, it says run it as administrator, but I think I am an administrator, so you might need to do administrator. Um, um, settings, okay, and um, to capture, you have to um, um, it's oh, yeah, that's right. If you hit the settings button, you can see to actually do the capture, um, you um, you press F10. Okay, or F12, or you can capture just textures as well. Okay, but um, yeah, just capture everything. So an F10 we should do. Um, if there's any animation in your scene, like this has got an ambient animation on it, um, you should see it freeze whilst it's happening, so you know it's happening. So um, F10 will, yeah, I press press the F10, and you can see the the motion has stopped for a few seconds. It should carry on once it's done it. Um, so that's it. It's captured those models. Um, so now you can go and find them for the next stage. So they should be in that folder that we asked it to send it to. So I'm just going to go there now. It's made a ninja of a folder. And um, here you see, um, well, these are some of my earlier ones I did yesterday, but um, the top of the list, the one that's got today's date the latest date uh, these um, using a list format for your windows rather than rather than the icons one is much better because you're going to need to um, see details like the dates and the size of files uh, more easily when you list them so I'm going to just go into that one we just made and there's nothing there so I've just actually gone the wrong one have I yes yeah, sorry it's the bottom one there. Um, so this is it's made a folder, and inside the folder is tons and tons of meshes, just just called mesh with a number and dot rip. Dot rip is the ninja um, format, um, and um, as you can see, if you're in list mode, that we they've got different sizes. They're very small files, just a few kilobytes each. 
So each of these little meshes is just a low resolution mesh like, mesh like we saw um, the Parthian cataphracts earlier. Um, so hopefully um, some of these will make up um, one of these men. I only really need um, to capture one of them because although they all look different here, they are actually all the same model, just repeated, but with different textures, different color textures on and different animation. So, um, and each one of these um, guys is made up of maybe uh, four or five uh, meshes because the bodies are separate from the shields, weapons, banners, etc. Okay, so um, somewhere on this this big list of rips isn't. We don't need all of them. We're just going to need about five of them, really, because they've repeated each each set has been repeated and they've all been captured. If you go down the list of the rips um, past all of the this is the, the, the dot rip files, the geometry from this scene. You see, there's a hell of a lot of them. There's what 200 or something. It's capturing the terrain as well, and probably you know every little rock that might have been modelled. Um, once we go down past the rips, we start to get to textures. So these are um, these textures are much quite quite large, but then they're reusing the same ones over and over. Some of the really big ones are going to be the ter the actual terrain textures for the the bigger areas. Um, so I'm pretty sure that these ones that are one megabyte are going to be the the, um, the actual texture maps for the, the figures themselves. So you can usually just open these in any photo editing software that you have. Um, um, so I use GIMP, which is a Photoshop, a sort of free Photoshop. So it's freeware Photoshop, and it works in much the same way as Photoshop. Um, the, the files are DDS files, which isn't the most common format. It's not like a JPEG that can be opened in any preview package, but Photoshop and programs like GIMP will open a DDS file. Um, so that's taken a little while. Okay, I'm going to try the next one. I think that was a transparent file that you couldn't see. So, hold on. Okay, I just have to hover over the program for it to drop it in. Okay, oh, so was, there's a little a little menu came up on the my other screen. I didn't notice it. It's so tiny, but yeah, it's asking me to just okay something. That's why the first one didn't come in. Okay, so that's um, the first one that that one that came in was um, a, a bump map, which is a pretty strange looking thing. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Let's try this one. Okay, yeah, so this is our main texture map. So our 3D model comes with these um, flattened textures, which is basically the painting on the thing. So you can see in there, there's the horse profile. There's a second horse there in a different color. There's, and there's two men here. This is um, the front of his jacket, the back of his jacket, the side of his head. Uh, there's another head there that looks exactly the same, but there's two different color, two different color people, two different color horses, basically, in this set that we can choose from and mix and match from. Um, there's a quiver there. Um, they'll make more sense in the 3D package when you when we get there. And the other picture that we saw is called a bump map. This gives the actual um, the rather flat looking faces that we saw that um, it gives them a lot more detail and it's basically like sort of carving carving into the faces to, to give it um, more relief detail. Um, it's in a weird sort of um, 3D format that lets um, 
that, that, that lets the computer know um, what the relief detail is. Um, so yeah, we come back to that in a bit anyway. So that's um, that's GIMP. That's another bit of software you need is, is Photoshop or GIMP to process the the two dimensional the textures for the stuff. Okay. But um, so yeah, so you've got this folder full of stuff. So you captured it, but you can't actually yeah do much with the models in this RIP format. That's why you need this the other software called Noesis. Okay. Um, once it has had that Python script dropped into it into the folder, like I showed you, it will um it will open these. Well, that's I'm just going to open the, the Noesis software. Get rid of um, field of glory for now. I don't need it. So notice this opens up like um, like this. So it's um, it comes with a big menu. You can find um, your Ninja Ripper file that you've made. Um, is that the new one? I think it's this one. Is the new one? So just go to the one we just made, okay, and click on it, and then it lists all of that stuff again. But this time, when you select one, you can actually um, export it as a different format. So um, again, it's got the size of them, so you get a clue as to this, whether there's something in it. If it's only got like two kilobytes, it's probably some tiny little thing, like a just a little square plane with a bit of grass on it or something it's not going to be any use but the slightly bigger ones are going to be your um, your models that you're after and you can see a pattern of them 62 27 42 and it starts again 62 27 42 a little bit further down so this is like these first five are likely to be the elements to one of those people with their weapons and stuff when the cycle starts again that's just the next the next guy that we captured because we had to capture a unit there with like eight men or something so we're really after the the first um the first six zero one two three four five um so just collecting selecting one of them you can go to file and export and then you can um send it somewhere i'm just sending it back to the same folder um and then you give it a file format so um uh, for Blender and Maya and 3D Max, uh, OBJ is really standard. So somewhere in here, there's a thing down the list of export formats. It has loads of them because that's what it does. Is um, it's the format called .obj, it's, um, and it says Wavefront OBJ. So that that format will open in any, almost anything. So that's what we we're after. Okay. Um, and I switch on the Rotate 90. You don't have to, you can do it when you get there, but th these models have all been um, flipped, flipped over. Um, so they come right, they, they usually come around the right way if you do that. So I'm going to press export. There's no guarantee. It could come in upside down, it often does, and back to front. Okay, that's done. So that's exported. So now we can, um, we can get, get one of these models into our 3D software. Once it's in our 3D software and we've got these textures, we know where they are. We can we can we could move them or edit them. Um, and we can bring them into the 3D software too. We can build um, one of these figures. So I'm going to show you what that one looks like. Um, just go back to Maya. My scene and my Parthians. I'm just going to get rid of the Parthians for now. Make a new scene. So everything I'm doing now, I'm in Maya, it can be done in Blender as well. But you do have to sort of learn the basics of Blender, how to navigate, how to move about in the 3D space. With your, you just It just uses um, keys on your keyboard and your mouse buttons, usually. So, um, And you'd have to learn a few of the basic sort of um, functions, like how to move points in models. But um, I'm in Maya now. I'm going to just, um, go and to import. And I need to go and find that location. VDG, Rips, Ninja Ripper. Um, find the latest one. Today's one is 1st of December. 
okay and then i'm in the file with all the rips but at the top there is my is my obj it's been given the same number that it had um, in its name as a rip but it's got dot obj on the end okay so i can just press that and op open it up and oh i captured a horse i wasn't expecting a horse i wasn't expecting a horse at all i'm sure there wasn't a horse in that scene i'm quite sure how that happened um possibly i was in the wrong folder actually <laughs> very strange as today Today's date at 2.30. All right, I managed to capture a horse. I don't know how that happened. There must have been a horse in the corner of the screen somewhere. I've closed it now, so I can't actually tell. Okay, well, I've got... Oh, no, I didn't close it. Oh, no, that the scene has actually moved now, so I don't know. Oh, there was a horse just in that corner. Look, I think I must have caught him. <laughs> Okay, well, it looks like we've captured a horse archer instead, which I didn't need. But anyway, carry on. It's just an example. Um, so, yeah, there's um, a mesh of the horse. There and in place. Okay, he's a low poly thing as well. Um, a lot of these pieces, like these flaps on the side, are actually come through as transparent and only a, a small piece will show up as the saddle blanket and the rest of it will be completely transparent so sometimes you get a surprise uh it doesn't look quite how it looks when you saw it in the game but that's because large pieces can often be transparent again here with the the reins um they would just be thin strips across there and the rest will be transparent um so these um so these triangle shapes are called polygons they come in triangles or squares normally if they have more than four sides they're bad news so they can have more than four sides but you don't want them that way you want them to either be triangles or square or, or rectangles always okay these are the basic building blocks of the cg um, they're called polygons and every polygon is made up of three or more uh, vertices okay so the points where they join up are called vertexes. There's one there showing up in yellow because I've got um, a tool set up, turned on I don't need. So that's a vertex. So they define, they're just like points in 3D space. And when you join them up, they make um, polygons. Okay. So um, so when you want to edit, when you're going to edit one of these models, you're going to be moving um, the vertices around. Okay, so they can be um, they can be manipulated, moved around in 3D space, uh, which is defined by these tools, which always um, Y for up and down, X axis for left and right, Z axis backwards and forwards um, in depth. Okay, um, so. Um, to move stuff, you have to move these points. Um, and it's just a matter of practice doing that, really. There's, there's a handful of keys that let you select and move things around. You can move stuff. You can rotate it on the same three axes. Um, you can deselect points so that you can then rotate the other ones that still exist back you can free move in any direction just by selecting the middle the middle of the thing okay move that back so you'll be tweaking and obviously when you're doing work in 3d it's no good just looking doing everything from one angle you have to keep moving around to make sure that you haven't moved things in a weird dimension you might have accidentally 
done that. You can see it from that angle. And um, when you turn around, you go, oh my God, my, it's, I've ripped it over there. So you have to keep moving around stuff. Um, you know, keys that let you rotate around the interesting area. So that's like, now I'm spinning around the hoof rather than the whole horse so I can see all around it. Um, there are tools like the one I had on earlier that let you do soft selects. So soft select um, lets you um, move some, but it, it sort of moves other ones nearby, has an influence on nearby pieces if you want to sort of bend something more subtly. Not much use in this case is moving the other legs, but um, you can select the whole head. Maybe yeah, the soft select might be more useful up there, so I can rotate the head to look the other way. But then obviously now I've rotated it, it's gonna from this angle it's looking a bit twisted, so you need to sort of move it back. And that, that looks fairly natural, just the horse looking that way a little bit. Um, you know. And the same with the people, you know, the arms and legs. It can be quite fiddly around the shoulders sometimes. Um Just gonna. Actually, no, I'm gonna keep that for now. So you can pose your model that way. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna give. Um, you can give the model different sorts of materials. So they have shader on them. It's called a shader. The, the color. So it's just this is a default one that as any model comes in just gets given this default gray main one but you you can give um give the model a shader and then you can apply that texture that we have also captured so we can see it with its textures um, okay i've just um applied a, a texture to that um it doesn't show much difference yet. Um, if I go on this up here, I can find the. Okay, that's so. This lets me um, edit the material. Um, so it says color here is white, but I can then add a file in there instead. Um, so that will let me actually put in that that picture that we saw in GIMP of the textures and they're all set up ready to for these models because they were made for them so if I I'd have to navigate to where it was it's in the wrong place of course um, and I need to remember which one it was uh, that's the folder um, so I think it was DDS well the model was zero yeah oh you get a thumbnail so it's that one Okay, so I've dropped that in and it's all wrong. It looks crazy. The man's face is in the saddle blanket and his tunic's on the horse. His, the quiver is on the horse's body. Um, the models often come in the wrong way around, but they, um, so there's an editor for the textures in the, in the 3D software. And you can see the the skin has been flattened. This the mesh on here represents the the actual mesh of the model, but it but in a two dimensional in a two dimensional way. So um, you can immediately see the horse is there and upside down compared to the horse down here. So um, when it comes in upside down like that, you can just there's a tool that just lets you flip flip the model the right way around. Okay. Now it's the right way up. You can see it matches, but it's in the wrong place. So I'm just going to move it down to the horse's body. And again, zoom in a bit so I can get it neatly, accurately in the right place. There's actually a bit right in the middle there where it has to sit anywhere off and it will be slightly out. Okay, so that's right. Let's just move that out of the way and then you can see a horse. He's looking a whole lot better, except his um, his saddle blankets and um, bits have not got their transparency. Um, 
it's because why is that because i didn't save it with transparency i opened it in here it has got the transparency you see in gimp it has the transparency i think it's because maya cannot read the dds files so once you got them into gimp you need to save this in a format which has keeps transparency there are several formats that can do that 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 are more common than dds um so png dot png and dot tiff dot tiff file um dot targa file dot if file um so i'm going to save it as a png save it oh sorry not save it um, export as png so just going to keep the same name but call it png save it to the same place it's not going to overwrite because it's a different file format um, export the software knows as soon as you call it png it, it knows what you mean and it exports it as that format um, you might get some settings come up asking you how what you want to save exactly but i'm just going to save that as it is and then um go back to Maya and I need to open the material again and just change it uh, change it from a DDS just select that again and pick um, pick the PNG that we just made that will work better it should do but it didn't oh, damn it <laughs> Um, why not? Why doesn't that work? Or maybe it does work and I just can't see it. Ah, maybe I'm looking at the wrong. I oh, love it when it really goes well. I'm going to assign that again. Okay, I can see the transparency has worked, but the horse is backwards. Sometimes the um, the faces all come in back to front. Um, so this. So you have to select all the faces and reverse reverse them okay got there so now um yeah there's some transparency so these bits are actually showing through as um the reins and the bits on the side are actually totally invisible i think so we're not even sure we really need them so you could um, actually extract bits from your model. Um, the models are often made up of several pieces that have been combined. So you can uncombine them and then any bits that you really don't need like those can be actually deleted. I don't think that bit's necessary at all. But the reins are quite good, so we'll keep those. You can see that's the actual original shape of the polygons, two polygons only define that whole um, bridle there. So that's quite cool. I'm just going to recombine them once I've got rid of what I didn't, those bits I didn't need. And we got a horse. Um, 
I need to, to render it, I need to make some lights in the scene. So the view that we see here looks a bit odd, but we're not looking at its final, it's not its actual final look. Um, so the software package has to be sort of told to render the, the, the file. To do that, it needs a few extra bits like an environment and some lighting. So I just quickly added an environment there, um, which needs also needs a texture map of some sort. So I've been using um, been using one that I had on the Normans. Uh, if I can find them, the Normans. Turn it around a bit. Um, huh? Where'd my horse go. Yeah, there's a horse. Um, that's him before he's even had his bump mapping as well. So that that strange purple um, map that we saw in GIMP, that can also be added to this. and also works in um, Tabletop Simulator as well. And, and that gives it even more detail. So it's worth putting in too. So we put in one picture map and there's also a place where um, we can add the bump map to Sorry. if I can find it oh, I know where it is I just um, right, okay there's my material and um, There's a bump map section here too. Don't know if it'll work because it is a DDS file still. I'm not sure it can. Oh no, it did work. Yeah, so it's, so that's um, it's sort of giving our surface a rougher, bumpier look. It's to put muscle tone in on the horse and stuff. Probably a bit too much. So you can actually, you know, you can control the amount that you do. It's like the default is is one, but you can put in 0.5 and just make it a little bit more subtle. And then um make your horse look even better yeah it's got you know little bumps around its nose and creases folds that weren't in the in the model that show up better now so that that's made it look even better okay and um things like horses you can do simple tricks to make variety you can do simple tricks like um, like flipping them in the opposite direction. So now, now we've got two horses already. Um, one facing left, one facing right. That was just simply copying it and flipping, um, scaling it in the X dimension. 
scaling by minus one makes it makes it a mirror image of your thing so that's an easy way to get a bit of variety it doesn't work with um with um soldiers so well because the, they will become left-handed and weapons switch sides as well but um if you're if you're clever when you're posing them before you've attached weapons and shields you could flip them to make some variety and then then add the shields and weapons back in left and right hands or have left-handed warriors i suppose <laughs> um the other quick way to change the um look of um to make a bit more variety is um by using the spare texture so if you get the texture editor back again obviously most of these um most of these models come with um a second um variety so you can literally move the the skin over to the other one so this so we got a, now we've got a gray horse as well as a white horse or a different a different kind of color gray horse so that's now we got now we've got three horses we could easily um and of course you can easily edit these um in gimp or photoshop and do some like color correction filters on these so that these horses could be brown or something quite easily it's not too hard to make to change the, the colors around um uh, maybe that's just a whole other thing to do another time but um yeah picking out certain colors and changing them to other other colors to change uniforms putting designs on shields changing shield designs etc changing the color i mean it seems a shame to have two heads identical there but they could have um used you know had had one of the different color hair or no beard or something on that side um so you can have two different types of head as well um yeah but it's best not to have too many you know maybe two or three at the most because these are bigger files as you saw they're much bigger than the models so um but if uh, this texture has been shared by the horses and the, the riders well, you could have four horses on this one and just make one for horses with four different color horses for the whole army well i hope that made some sort of sense um um i think the the hardest bit is really just yeah learning how to manipulate you know how to use this 3d software opening the texture files moving the moving the points but um tons of youtube tutorials on using blender for beginners um and they'll just take you through step by step just the basic things you just want to look up low poly modeling really but i think um that's how most of the tutorials actually would start on on that kind of exercise anyway i think because it is the most sort of fundamental you know um, thing to to do when you're using a 3d package um light blender is is um poly modeling so um so i hope that's some help yeah and yeah you just look like once you've got the hang of it you can quickly um pull out those assets from games and and repose them and make up new armies and fairly quickly anyway i wouldn't say it's instantaneous because you need so many different sorts to make one up but yeah all right then <laughs> I hope that was some help, everybody. <laughs>